the foreigner amongst you or the person that's in a place of being disadvantaged is throughout the Old Testament. And, uh, and then Jesus demonstrated. He becomes a refugee himself when Herod wants to take out all the babies and he has to go into, uh, cross into Egypt to seek refuge until, until the all clear is able to come back. 40% of international students will come to the United States wanting to have a true American friendship. This could be both a fellow college student or a community member and they will go home disappointed. We want to provide a better image of, of who we are. We want them to see who we actually are and what it actually means to be experiencing the love of Christ and how that has us pour ourselves out in hospitality and welcome. ELL stands for English Language Learners and it's for students from other countries that are actually just needing to learn English so that they can go to high school here. They're at about a fourth, fifth grade reading level and yet they're in like 10th, 11th grade classes at high school. So they work really hard and it's a program just for them to really improve and be able to function and be able to do well at school. The way I got involved was the ELL teacher at Liberty approached Cindy Sulwer and asked her if she would be willing to bring a team of people once a week who would just spend time with these students, about maybe an hour of our time. and. The first half was just talking with them, conversation, so this would force just a lot of English. And then the second half was just reading with them. The ELL teacher actually paired us up with students, and I ended up working with two students, a young woman and a young man. What really drew me to the young woman was that she was actually an orphan, and I think my heart just really went out to her as a teen girl with no mom in her life, and I just wanted to pour love on her. The young man was just a prince of a guy, just dear, we just connected. And just over time, building that relationship with them and being able to share my life with them and their life with me very quickly became about God and about family, about struggles. We ended up praying together almost every week that we met, um, especially towards the end. I grew up as a missionary kid myself, and so I was a foreigner as a teen. I spent most of my childhood in Australia, and then when we moved back to the States, I was about 15. So I came from a single parent household where my father was, in, was addicted to alcohol, died addicted to alcohol, it was abusive to my mom. She tried to leave him 17 times before she actually did. And so she went to a small town to, to hide from him. In that community, the church just really cared for my mom really well, and we experienced the love and the mercy through the Christian body um, towards us, right? So there would be times where my mom wasn't able to have gifts to give for Christmas and uh, there would be someone giving a gift card or giving a present for her to give to me. Uh, there would be times where groceries were, were left on our doorstep and there was uh, folks in the community who didn't babysit anybody but their own grandchildren but chose to watch me so my mom could get time to go to school uh, or could go and work a second job. And so experiencing that mercy was something that helped me experience Christ's love and Christ's mercy, more of an individualistic experience of, of God. But then when I went to college my freshman year, I went to a thing called Urbana. And at this conference, I got to see what the global church looks like. And I recognized that Christianity isn't just an American thing. It's actually multiple cultures. And so I felt like God opened my eyes when I returned back to campus. I, I saw international students that I hadn't even noticed in my classes and on my campus. And so from that point on, um, I just felt the desire to be able to disciple Christian international students and then be a friend and be a welcoming presence to folks from all over the world. I love to run and I, I love to run that path on Dubuque that goes right by the school. And every time I ran past Liberty, I just prayed, God, just bless this school, just get your word in and don't let it be closed out. I feel like God used me to be an answer to my own prayer and I had no idea that was going to happen. And towards the spring, it was kind of getting towards the end of the year, I just had this thought that would not go away. It kept coming to me and it was like, what if we could get these kids Bibles? Because what we're doing with them is reading. And I was like, if they could just read God's Word. When I was their age, God's Word was my lifeline. It was my absolute survival. So it was just so cool how it all worked out. God brought a lot of people together to make it happen. Um, children's ministry helped fund it. Um, youth ministry, Wade Summers with Outreach. Everybody pitched in to buy them these beautiful Bibles. That was just really special, how the Lord answered prayer, you know, to get the Word into their lives. And growing up as a missionary kid, I, I always wondered if I would be a missionary myself. I was very open to that. And so far, as an adult, God has called me to be here in the States. 
and yet I've had such a heart for the internationals or the foreigners here that I think the Lord has given me through my own experience of being the foreigner, but also that's His heart and I think He gives us His heart for people. And it was just so special that like for me, as I'm fulfilling God's call in my life to be a wife and a mom here in North Liberty, Iowa, that I could be a part of Jesus' command to go into all the nations and make disciples. And all we had to do was walk across the street. They're there. And he set it up. 